Adapt Beckers, my name is John Rott, I am the Keeper of the Gate. If you have just finished watching the Hazzy Size Update, what you're about to hear here is mostly repetition of what I have just told the Hazzy Size Beckers. Um, there will be a few new things, um, but it's mostly the same. So if you don't want to watch this, you're not going to miss a ton. Um, if you do want to watch it, I invite you to uh, visit us and stay with us because we're going to just have a lot of fun as we usually do in our video updates. Okay, I, John Rott, as a man, as a husband, as a father, um, as a keeper of the gate, when I have the opportunity to be chivalrous, to be a man of my word, I will take it. And I promised you a July ship time. And it is within my power to do. And we are going to air freight all ADAPT games worldwide in order to keep our promise of July to you. Yes. Oh, but John, 99.98% of us voted against that plan. Why are you doing that? Um, because I can, because I care about you, because when I say that my backers are my friends, and I treat you like that, and I'm going to respond to your comments, I'm going to respond to your emails, I'm going to address you by name every time that I get the chance to do so. I mean it. So, um, and this is an opportunity to keep a promise. I told you July, and I'm keeping that promise, okay? So, congratulations, you are going to get your games in July. So, if you did an address update, and you're worried that it might come in August, and you have to update it again, the dice, the games, the player mats, everything coming in July. Alright, so here's how it works. So ADAPT has its timeline. Alright, Havzies has its timeline that kind of look like this for heaven's sake, okay? Havzies Dice Project, okay? And we've been working on that for a year and a half. And ADAPT in the meantime, I said we got to keep things moving. Havzies is in a good place. And ADAPT is in a good place. And it turns out that both darts landed on the same half a month on the calendar. ADAPT is ready to ship now. Um, have these dice will be ready to ship in about 10 to 15 days, um, depending on QC things at the last moment. So, if I combine have these dice and adapt during freight shipping and freight ship them as one really big entity, I save a lot. And then by, um, Saving that, I can offset the cost that it's going to cost to air freight. Now, not all of them, okay? So, um, again, I'm going to sound, if you've watched the other video, you're going to hear this again. But um, by combining them, when I ship have these dice, and I'm going to mention them first because they were first on the timeline. When I ship have these dice, I have to ship some games to uh, European Fulfillment Center, some games to U.S. Fulfillment Center, some games to U.S. distribution locations, some games um, to, oh, we have multiple locations. Every lane, they call it, every shipping lane has its startup and its closing costs. So that we have three or four major shipping lanes, so that's six to eight start and closing costs. And then ADAPT has the same thing. We're going to use the same fulfillment partners in the same lanes. So we're going to go to here, 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 and here. So now we have 6 plus 6 plus 6 plus 6, and we have 24 starting and closing costs. If I merge them, the starting and closing costs merge. We save a lot. So a lot of the thousands of dollars that it's going to cost to air freight is going to be offset by that. The other way that we're going to offset this is we are not going to use a fulfillment center. We budgeted to pay fulfillment companies such as Amazon or what have you to ship our games out for us. Um, it is a very time efficient way and it's reasonably cost efficient. But packing it myself from my living room with my wife and a bunch of friends and really big pizzas like we did for the King's Armory to call that team back together um, from my living room is not time efficient at all but it's very cost efficient okay um, so we're gonna self fulfill everything that is 1900 orders worth of has these dice and 700 orders worth of adapts ah, it's awesome so, um, I'm actually kind of excited about it. It's insane, but we're going to do it. And we're going to do it all in July. We're going to get it all done. The goal is to get it all done in two weeks. So, um, we're going to air freight the games together. I'm going to self-fulfill them 
from my home so I don't have all the everybody else's costs and things of that sort and um, and then that's how we're gonna offset most of it and then there's still gonna be a certain amount we're not paying for all of it in this regard um, there's gonna be a certain amount of that freight shipping cost that we're not recovering in this and that's worth it for you so that's the plan for the air freight yay other news MSRP of the dice so the MSRP of the three dice in the main game the three sets of dice in the main game um, are going to um, their MSRP has gone up and then the MSRP of the three sets of dice that you can add on have also gone up MSRP of all Gatekeeper Games have these dice have gone up. Why? I am going to cut this part of the video from the other one because I'm not editing this twice. All right, ready? Cue me in the same chair an hour ago. Ready? Go. Okay, next big point of news is, dun, 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 brace yourself, the MSRP, that is Manufacturer's Suggested Retail Price on Havsey's Dice, has officially gone up. It is now $12 per set. Yeah, $12 per set. Why? Well, they're designer dice. When you have plain black dice with white paint like this, okay, it's very easy. And that's why if you go into your local store in your dice bin, you're gonna get one of these for like 30 cents. 50 cents at the most, okay? Um, it's one color, it's black, it's kind of hard to screw up black, right? And then it's white paint, which of course we're gonna have in droves. This isn't something that we need to do testing and experimenting on. Black is black, white is white, and we've made ourselves one solid dice. There's no pearl, there's no shine, there's no translucent, okay? When you then jump to colors, okay? It gets a little bit more expensive. And then when you jump to two colors with shine, this is a Chessex dice, I love Chessex's dice. When you have two colors, okay, and a little bit of sparkle, now when you buy, go to this one at Chessex's booth, um, you're going to pay $1.25 for this one right out of their booth. Why? Well, it's way more difficult. There's two colors, we have to get both colors right, and it's not black. Um, what shade of blue? Do we get the blue right? How many times does that take? And we know that that could be a problem. Um, we had the problems with the red, with the magma dice and things of that sort too. And the gold, what color, you know, what shade of gold? How are we going to make that yellow? Because there's no gold and there's no gold color. It's only how do we make yellow look like gold. So the gold and then the sparkles and then the two colors and the ejection and the mix and then the burnt and then we're done. Okay, it's a lot more work. It's like step up, step up, step up. Then, when you go to buy one of these, um, it's going to be even more expensive. Why? Because each step um, gets more expensive. There are a number of things that go into MSRP. MSRP is like five times manufacturing rate or what have you. Um, but what sets the manufacturing cost is the difficulty, how much time it takes to make it, um, how many redos they have to do. If I, we can get it right every time, like a solid black dye, there's no redo, so it's super cheap. When the blues are coming off weird or the reds are coming off weird every now and again, um, we have to redo that one. They just throw it out and they make a new one. So if they're gonna make 2,000 dice, they're gonna end up making like 2,300 or whatever their error rate is, depending on the different dice. When you have two colors and they're going to blend, we talked about this before, it's you shoot one color in, you shoot the other color in, and however it finishes, you call it the dye and you're happy about it. When you must have half and half and you can't have color sinking through and bleeding with those spots that I showed you in that other video, um, it's even harder. Okay, Our dice are also, in addition to two colors um, and the... Uh, and the little sparkliness that they have, they are also that half and half arrangement, which is incredibly difficult. Our factory was ripping their hair out trying to get it right on some of the sets. Um, and then, beyond that, it's also semi-translucent. How do you put enough ink in there so that when you look at it, it looks like a solid entity? Yet, not enough ink in there, just a little not enough, such that when it's backlit, it actually shines brighter. So, it's very, very difficult, and they work very, very hard for it. Um, and all of the costs that we've had in making things right, and making things right, and making things right, is increasing the MSRP. How does that affect you? Not at all! We 
manage to make the product for you, you're getting it. Don't worry, everything's going to be good for you. But our the MSRP in the future is going to go up to $11.95 is what it's going to be set at. These dice are more difficult to create. They are a designer board game dice. And the MSRP ac will accurately reflect the difficulty and the price paid for them. Uh, standard MSRP in the board game industry is about times five manufacturing costs. Some people do times five landing costs, which includes freight, blah, blah, blah. Uh, but our freight got completely berserk, and we don't want that to affect people in the future, so we're not including it. Um, five times manufacturing cost is at, equals MSRP, plus or minus, and you round off to a pretty number. Um, we... Gatekeeper games have consistently done less than five, uh, than times five. Uh, King's Armory was less than times five. Adapt is going to be less than times five. Um, has these dice is less than times five. We just, that's the way we do things. We do things less than times five because, well, I want you to be able to afford it because I would like to be able to afford it. And that explains why MSRP is going up. Okay, so what does that mean for you? That means that your base game of Adapt, the MSRP, will probably end up going up in uh, retail. So you saved a ton on that. And each of those dice sets that you added for $9 each during the campaign was not just $1 off MSRP. You saved $3 off each of those. So congratulations. Okay, so enjoy that. Um, and then, so that's that news. And then the last news also regards the dice sets. Guppy Tail... Diamond Dust and Rust Metal, uh, we've rebranded. All that means is that we've renamed them. The dice are exactly the same. So uh, Guppy Tail is now named Luminous. Diamond Dust is now named Amethyst. And Rust Metal is now named the Latte Dice. Um, why? Well, two reasons. One, I kind of like the new names better. Um, I have an attachment to the older names. Um, I kind of really actually like the name Rust Metal. Um, and I actually really like Guppy Tail Diamond Dust. I was like, hey, that's a cool name for it. Um, but when I, ha when I had these prototypes on the table at a local convention, uh, we'd have them for sale because they're just there to show. But when I had them on the table to say, hey, this is what's going to be coming with Adapt if you order it. This is back during the Kickstarter. Um, people were looking at them and were like, oh my gosh, these dice look like coffee. Oh my gosh, they look like coffee and cream. You should call these like coffee and cream dice or like cappuccino dice or whatever. And we ended up, uh, after a discussion, we ended up going with latte dice. The number of people that said they look like coffee, I said we need to rename these. And then the diamond dust dice, they're purple and white. So people were coming by and they're like, oh my gosh, is this real amethyst? It's, are these dice real amethyst? And I was like, no, but that's a cool better name if like, 12 people just came by and asked if these were amethyst, then let's rename them from diamond to amethyst. And then for the luminous dice, um, Guppy Tail is really cool and thematic during the campaign, but then I ultimately thought to myself, Thank you so much for watching. As always, congratulations again on getting your game on time. Unless customs mess with uh, messes with us, you will officially receive a Kickstarter game at the date that was promised to you. Congratulations, and I'm really excited to be able to say that I've done that. Um, it's not over yet. Dear God, please let customs not mess with us. Um, We'll see what happens. All right, but that is the plan. They will be shipping in mid-July, and my plan is to get them all out before I have to leave for Gen Con. So you're going to get your games um, before that. Uh, feel free to bring it to Gen Con. People have mentioned something about me signing their copies. It would be my pleasure to sign your copy, okay? I'm, like, really not that cool, but I'll, I'll bring a marker. All right, so um, I'd be happy to do that for you if you would like. Um, that's it. Thank you very much. Have a wonderful day.